start with reading number 25 of the CFA curriculum, a very important reading that deals with the concept of capital budgeting, an introduction to which we already got at level 1 of the CFA exam. So once again, we will revise the basics, understand the analysis of expansion, replacement and other projects that we didn't really do at level 1, understand what to do when projects are mutually exclusive, understand the concept of capital rationing, real options and how they can add value, we'll understand the pitfalls of capital budgeting and some other means of analysis, namely the economic income, economic profit and the residual income methods and wind up with certain alternatives to DCF for calculating project value and NPV. Once again, capital budgeting is the process of identifying and evaluating capital projects. So a capital expense is an expense that is made today the cash outflow happens today whereas the inflow will be received over a period longer than one year there can be various categories of capital budgeting projects it can be a replacement project to sustain the current business because your plant has become old so you want to replace it replacement projects for cost reduction expansion project to expand the capacity of your factory new product or market if you want to launch or if you want to get into mandatory projects may be required by the government for example if you're cutting trees then you have to give land somewhere else and a forest as much that is plant as many trees as you're cutting other projects may be pet projects of the management that the management always wanted to do sometimes they can be charitable projects or a corporate social responsibility that the firm wants to take on so these projects all fall in the category of capital budgeting or capital projects because these are big expenditures that will happen and benefits will come over a period greater than one year. This was the most important slide at level one. It is equally important at level two wherein we'll revise the basic principles of capital budgeting. First of all, decisions are based on cash flows and not accounting income. So net profit is not what we are interested in. We are interested in the cash flows that are available to the firm. Generally, the definition of cash flow that we will use is the free cash flow to firm or the adjusted cash flow from operations. Adjusted for the fact that interest is ignored or we do not subtract interest. We need to focus on incremental cash flows that the project is going to get. That is, sunk costs should not be considered. Cannibalizations and externalities should be considered. So if this project is going to take away sales from another project or another product, then that must be considered. Any positive benefits that this project is going to bring in should also be considered. Cash flows are based on opportunity costs. So if I started a factory and the factory earns $50 every year. However, the land that this factory is on belongs to my father and I'm not paying any rent. If I was to include the fair rent for the land, then the profit would actually be minus 50, not plus 50. So for the purpose of capital budgeting analysis, should we use $50 as the cash flows or minus 50 as the cash flow? So opportunity costs need to be considered, hence you should use minus 50 as the cash flow and not plus 50. Because if you didn't have this factory, you could have leased the land for $100. So actually this factory is destroying value to the extent of $50. Even by earning $50, you are economically speaking losing $50. Timing of the cash flows is important as we are worried about the present value of the cash flows. Cash flows are analyzed on an after tax basis and very importantly because please remember that tax is a cash expense unlike depreciation. Tax actually needs to be paid this year to the government. And very importantly Financing costs are reflected in the required rate of return. That is, the cost of equity 
and the cost of debt if you are taking on this project we would either take it with equity or with debt is the rate of interest or the rate of return that has to be provided to the people who are supplying us this capital we will only undertake projects whose cash flows and whose returns are higher than this weighted average cost of capital that has to be spent or that has to be returned to the capital suppliers so only projects that are meeting our weighted average cost of capital will be selected so the cost of equity and cost of debt are already considered in the required rate of return we do not need to subtract them from the cash flows so very important and you must remember guys ignore interest cost from the cash flows when solving questions on capital budgeting that is to say you may need to add back the interest into 1 minus the tax to the cash flows because if you ignore interest then there will be no associated tax benefit also from the interest now the reason we need to adjust for interest cost often is because it comes above the net income so we never consider the dividends paid out anyways because in cash flow from operations free cash flow to firm dividends have never anyways been deducted if we were deducting that we would have we would have had to add those back as well so both cost of equity and cost of debt should not be considered in the cash flows because we are considering it in the required rate of return because interest has already been subtracted hence we add it back so you do not have to remember the modified accelerated cost recovery system it is just some allowable depreciation percentages that firms in the us can use so if you're following or if you think your asset depreciates within three years in an accelerated format then you can adopt the three-year MACRS that is 33 percent of the plant will be depreciated in the first year 45 in the second 15 in the third and seven percent in the fourth year the reason this spills over to the fourth year is because we assume that the asset started in the middle of the third year so even if we even if the life is three years it will wind up in the middle of the fourth year this is called the half year convention that is used in the macrs system similarly if your asset is a five year accelerated depreciation you can use these numbers seven year and ten year the depreciation and the depreciation method will be given to you you do not need to memorize these values the depreciable basis or the cost basis of an investment please remember is the purchase price plus the shipping handling and installation costs are all capitalized or are all added on to the initial cost of the asset or the project now when analyzing cash flows and we'll understand better with an example there is an initial outlay that initial outlay is the fixed capital investment that is the investment in plant machinery building equipment installation so on and so forth and please remember there is also an investment in net working capital that is if i'm starting a business or a project i may often be leasing a premises when i'm leasing a premises i may have to pay a deposit to the landlord this deposit is not a fixed asset or a fixed asset investment it will come back to me when i wind up the business but for now is it an investment just like the fixed capital investment nonetheless this money has to go out of my pocket today and it'll come back whenever the investment is wound up so to begin with the investment outlay will have the fixed capital investment and also the net working capital investment the net working capital can be calculated as the increase in non-cash assets minus the increase in non-cash liabilities that is the increase in net working capital this will be the same as the increase in net working capital that we studied in cash flow from operations 
this will normally be a cash outflow at t equal to zero the initial investment outlay subsequently from years one two and three or definitely a couple of years ahead we will start getting in after tax operating cash flows from the project so these cash flows are simply the cash sales minus the cash costs the only other cost that needs to be deducted is the tax to be paid to the government please note interest is not deducted now to deduct the tax i could tax the entire cash profit however i will be over taxing because there is a depreciation benefit that i can take so i will have to add back the depreciation benefit or i can compute the after tax cash flow including depreciation and then add back the depreciation amount both will give us the same answer in the final year when you wind up your project there will be terminal year after tax non operating cash flows which mainly is the salvage value of your project plus that net working capital that deposit that you had given initially will now come back minus any tax implication in case your salvage value is higher than the book value so you have depreciated your plant fully but your plant still got sold for a fairly significant value when you wound up operations hence you will have to pay some additional tax on the profit you will recognize on the salvage value of the asset so let's do an example and understand invesco incorporated would like to set up a new factory currently invesco has an option to buy an existing plant at a cost of forty thousand dollars required equipment modifications and refurbishments will additionally cost twenty thousand dollars the project would also require an initial investment of twenty thousand dollars in networking capital the project's estimated life is four years at the end of that time the plant is expected to have a market value of twenty thousand dollars and a book value of twenty one thousand dollars whereas the equipment is expected to have a market value of six thousand dollars and a book value of seventy five hundred dollars annual sales will be $100,000 variable manufacturing costs will be 60% of the sales and that fixed overhead costs excluding depreciation will be $10,000 a year so cash fixed expenses will be $10,000 every year invesco's federal plus state tax rate is 40% its cost of capital is 12% the plant will begin operations immediately after the investment is made and the first cash flow will come exactly one year later assume the pre-tax depreciation for the plant and equipment is fifteen thousand dollars every year compute the initial investment outlay operating cash flow over the project's life and the terminal year cash flows for investors expansion project determine whether the project should be accepted using npv analysis so first is the initial outlay then the operating cash flows then the terminal cash flows and the NPV. So we'll do it one by one. So for the initial outlay, there's a $40,000 investment in the plant. There's a $20,000. There's a $20,000 investment in additional equipment and modifications. So the fixed capital investment will be equal to $60,000. This is the fixed capital investment. The project would also require an initial investment of $20,000 in networking capital. So the increase in networking capital or the working capital investment will also have to be added. Hopefully this will get refunded back or it will come back when the project is terminated. So the initial outlay is equal to $80,000. That's the first part of the question that asks us to calculate the initial outlay. 
The second part is to calculate the after tax operating cash flows for each of the four years. So let's do it for year one first. Now, at the end of year one, Invesco has annual sales of $100,000. So that will be the sales S. There will be variable costs of 60% of the sales, that is $60,000. And there will be additional fixed costs of $10,000 as is given in the question. This will give us the total costs. From this, we need to deduct the tax amount and we will get our after tax operating cash flows. So there are many ways to do that. You can apply 1 minus T plus T into D or the other formula that we studied in the previous slide. Or we can simply calculate the tax amount and subtract the tax. So if 30,000 is the earnings before interest tax and depreciation then what will be the earnings before interest and tax it will be 30,000 minus the depreciation of 15,000 for year one so EBT for year one will be this amount 30,000 minus the 15,000 of depreciation will be equal to 15,000 the marginal tax rate is given to be 40%. So 40% of this amount will be paid in the form of taxes equaling 6K. So from the sales minus costs, we need to additionally deduct a tax amount of $6,000 to bring us our after tax operating cash flows. That is 30 minus 6, $24,000. Because the depreciation expense is the same every year in our simplistic example, this will not always be the case. Our cash flows in year 2, year 3 and year 4 will also be the same as $24,000 because the sales remain the same, the costs remain the same, 60%, 10000 remains the same and the depreciation remains the same, hence the tax amount of 6000 will also remain the same. For 4 years, we will have an operating cash flow of $24,000. The last thing now to calculate is the terminal non operating cash flow at the end of year four when the project is wound up. The primary cash flows at the end of termination relate to salvage value from the sale of our assets. The salvage value of the plant is $20,000. The equipment is $6,000. So we will get $20,000 from the plant, $6,000 from the equipment. And we will get our net working capital back, which we invested to the tune of $20,000 in year one. However, we see that both the plant as well as the equipment have a book value higher than the salvage value. That is, we will be booking a loss on these sales. So it was being carried at $21,000. However, we realized only $20,000. So there will be a loss to the tune of $1,000, which will help us set off any taxes that we are paying. So there will be a tax benefit to the tune of thousand dollars into 40 percent on the plant and there will be a tax benefit to the tune of fifteen hundred dollars into 0.4 on the equipment the terminal net operating cash flow will come out to be forty seven thousand dollars the next step is to compute the npv of the project so we will represent all our cash flows in a timeline and then discount the values back to compute the NPV. So there's an initial cash outflow of $80,000 at the end of T equal to zero. At the end of 
each of your one two three and four there will be a recurring operating cash inflow of twenty four thousand dollars and at the termination of the project from the salvage values and the release of the networking capital we will get additional forty seven thousand dollars the discount rate that is the cost of capital is given to be 12 percent so we can use that and we can use the cf and npv sheet of the calculator to do this calculation so please take your calculators out and press the button cf Always remember the first thing to do after going into the CF sheet is to clear work so that all previously stored values get erased. So press second and press clear out. Now enter the cash flows. CF zero is minus $80,000. So we will press 80,000, press the button plus minus and press enter. Scroll down. CO one is $24,000. So press 24,000 and press enter scroll down again the frequency of this cash flow is actually four times but at year four there's additional money coming so at least for the next three years this twenty four thousand is the only cash coming in so we'll press f01 as three and press enter and scroll down at the end of year four please not cot please not co2 is now year four because we entered the frequency earlier as three Will be sixty. Will be seventy one thousand dollars. So press seventy one thousand and press enter, and you would have inputted your cash flows. Next step is to go to the NPV sheet. So just press the button NPV, enter the discount rate that is equal to twelve in this case, and press the button enter. Scroll down again and press compute and you will get the NPV of the project as $22,765. Please verify your answers. In a replacement project, the firm must decide whether to replace an existing asset with a newer or better asset or not does it make financial sense or not so in a replacement project we need to additionally incorporate the cash inflow that we will receive from the sale of the old asset so there will be an investment in the new asset but we will get some salvage value adjusted for tax from the sale of our old project that needs to be accounted for in the initial investment outlay Secondly, when calculating the operating cash flows, it is the incremental benefit that we have to see. So we need to see that what is the additional benefit that this new investment is bringing in over and above what the old was already giving me. So let's do an example and understand it better. Suppose Invesco wants to replace an existing manual packaging system with a new automated packaging system. The existing manual system purchased 10 years ago at a cost of $15,000. The existing manual packaging system was purchased 10 years ago at a cost of $15,000. The manual system had an expected life of 15 years and the expected salvage value is zero. The manual system is being depreciated on a straight line basis and currently has a net book value of $5,000. So on a straight line basis, 15 years and a cost of $15,000, it'll be $1,000 every year. The new automated copying system can be purchased for $40,000, including freight and installation. Over its five year life, it will reduce labor and raw materials usage sufficiently to cut annual operating costs from $14,000 to $4,000. So the incremental benefit that will come
or the incremental cash inflow will be to the tune of ten thousand dollars it is estimated that the new system can be sold for it is estimated that the new system can be sold for four thousand dollars at the end of five years the old manual packager's current market value is $3,000, which is below its $5,000 book value. The old system will be sold to another company if the new automated system is acquired. The company's marginal tax rate is 40%. Net working capital requirements will also increase by $3,000 at the time of replacement. The project's cost of capital is 10%. Assume the pre-tax depreciation for the new equipment is $10,000 every year for the next four years and zero in year five. So once again, compute the initial investment outlay, operating cash flow over the project's life and the terminal year cash flows for Invesco's replacement project and then determine whether the project should be accepted using the NPV analysis. So the system can be purchased for $40,000. So $40,000 needs to be added. There will be net working capital requirements of $3,000. So another $3,000 on the new equipment. But we have to reduce the salvage value of the old equipment that can be recovered now if we purchase the new equipment. So the old equipment can be sold for $3,000 so we will get a benefit of $3,000 and we will additionally get a benefit on tax because the book value of the old equipment is $5,000 so if we sell it now we will also be able to gain that tax benefit so an additional benefit of $5,000 minus $3,000 that is $2,000 into 40% that is $800. This will give us the initial outlay as $39,200. Understood guys? <clears throat> now let's try to deduce the year one cash flow. So in year one, the incremental cash benefit will be to the tune of $10,000. So we will increase this to the tune of $10,000. Interest cost does not need to be subtracted and this is anyways the net benefit. So from this amount we only need to deduct the tax. Depreciation doesn't have to be deducted. Depreciation is needed to calculate the correct tax amount. Now, incrementally, the new printer will increase depreciation expense to the tune of $10,000. Now, incrementally, the new system is going to give us depreciation of $10,000, but we are giving up on the $1,000 that the old system was giving us as depreciation benefit so the incremental depreciation benefit is only to the tune of nine thousand dollars so to calculate the year one cash flow we can tax the entire ten thousand benefit and then add back the benefit of tax that we get from the nine thousand depreciation expense that will be there incrementally from the new system so plus nine thousand into point four understand what we've done guys 10,000 was the incremental benefit we tax the entire thing if we tax the entire thing then what will we get 10,000 into 1 minus point was so basically we're getting only 6,000 but we are also getting some depreciation benefit basically in calculating the tax amount the depreciation should have been reduced depreciation benefit is how much whatever is the depreciation multiplied by the 
actually so the year one cash flow comes out to be 9600 this cash flow will remain the same at year two year three year four because the depreciation expense is the same at the end of year five however there is no depreciation on account of the new equipment or the new system so for year five we will have a ten thousand benefit which will be taxed fully and there is no benefit that we are getting from the new equipment and we still have given up on the thousand dollar benefit that we could have received from the old printer had we retained it so the cash flow in the budgeting computation that will go will be 10,000 into 1 minus 0 0.4 minus 1,000 into 0.4 that is the tax benefit that I'm giving up on the old system. So the operating cash flows will be $9,600 for 4 years and for the last year will be equal to $5,600. The last step is to calculate the terminal year non-operating cash flow. So it is estimated that the new system can be sold for $4,000 at the end of 5 years. So we will receive this $4,000 salvage value. The old cost has already been accounted for so we won't double count it. At this time, the book value of the new equipment would be how much? It would be zero as we have entirely depreciated it at the end of year 4. So this entire amount will be taxed or we will have to reduce 4000 into 40 percent as the tax that i'll have to pay on the salvage value giving me a terminal net operating cash flow of of 2400 plus the net working capital of three thousand dollars that should now get released So terminal non-operating cash flow comes out to be $5,400. Let's represent all the cash flows in a timeline and compute the present value to decide whether we should replace the old system with the new system or not. So at t equal to 0, there is an initial outlay of $39,200. At the end of year 1, we get $9,600. And similarly, at the end of year two, year three, and year four, at the end of year five, we get an operating cash inflow of $5,600 plus a terminal net operating cash flow of $5,400. We can discount these cash flows in the same manner as earlier. Remember to clear work first and compute the NPV of the project which will now come out to be minus $1939 or because the NPV is negative the project should not be accepted or the system should not be replaced. Please verify answers. We should generally be aware of the effects of inflation on our analysis. So remember that nominal cash flows should be discounted back at the nominal rate similar to the analysis that we just did. Real cash flows should be discounted back by the real rate of interest. Changes in, in inflation will affect project profitability as the discount rate would normally increase as the inflation increases and hence the present value of the project will decrease. Inflation reduces the tax savings from depreciation because depreciation which gave us a tax benefit as we saw in both examples previously is based on historical cost. So depreciation based on historical cost would be an underestimation because based on current inflated values the assets value is higher and the assets depreciation would also be higher. 
and therefore correspondingly the tax savings would also have been higher inflation decreases the value of the payment to bondholders because the payments are fixed and will be discounted back at a higher rate and finally inflation may affect revenues and costs differently if revenues go up more because you can take price hikes but your costs don't go up as much then it is a good thing but if your costs go up because of inflation but you're not able to take a price hike or your revenues don't go up then it will be negative for the company we studied mutually exclusive projects at level one wherein only one of the two projects or one of the many projects can be accepted if mutually exclusive projects have different lives that is one is a three-year project and another is a five-year project and both of them are exclusive that is i can only take on one of them for example there is a piece of land and there's only one kind of factory that i can put up on the land it can either be a cement plant or a steel plant or a school and these projects will be mutually exclusive so if the lives are different and the projects can be replaced indefinitely that is after three years for project one i can again continue it for another three years and i can again continue it for another three years so on and so forth so if it, whereas if a project b was let's say originally a five-year project but after five years the land is still there so i can again continue it for another five years and another five years so on and so forth so if lives are different then an adjustments need to be made in the analysis so there are two ways in which we can decide which project to choose the first is called the least common multiple of lives approach and the second is called the equivalent annual annuity approach we will see both in the coming examples so east cotton is planning to modernize facilities east cotton is considering purchasing either a cleaner with a useful life of six years or a dryer which has a useful life of three years the timelines presented in the following two figures show the cash flows npvs and irrs for both of these mutually exclusive projects it's very important if they weren't mutually exclusive probably both of them should have been taken so the expected cash flows for the cleaner which is a six year project are as shown and the npv at 12% comes out to be about $6500 and the irr comes out to be 17.5% for the dryer which is a three year project the npv comes out to be $5000 and the irr comes out to be about 25.2% now we can only take on either one of these however if each of these are infinitely replaceable that is after three years i can again make a $20000 investment and again get these cash flows for another three years so on and so forth similarly after six years i can again make the forty thousand dollar investment and again get the cash flows for another six years then the least common multiple approach says that to do your analysis extend both cash flows or extend both projects to the least common multiple of their lives so the first project has a life of six years the second project has a life of three years the least common multiple of these is equal to six years so we don't need to extend project two we can simply ex extend project one another three years so after three years we'll again make that twenty thousand dollar investment and again get those cash flows or again derive an npv at T equal to three just like at t equal to zero of five one five five dollars that was originally come hence on a six year basis the total npv of the cleaner at 12 percent would be five one five four point eight eight plus five one five four point eight eight upon one point one two to the power three that will come out to be about nine thousand dollars now both of them are six year projects so is the dryer better or the cleaner so with the least common multiple approach we find out that the dryer 
gives more absolute wealth or gives us a higher NPV as compared to the cleaner. Remember, whenever deciding between two mutually exclusive projects, we always have to look at the NPV of the projects because that is what represents the absolute addition to shareholder wealth. The second approach is called the equivalent annual annuity approach, which tells us that on an annualized basis, what is the net cash inflow coming from either of these projects? So the cleaner gives me an NPV of 6500 over six years. So if I enter N as six, I enter PV as 6490.94. I enter I by Y as 12, I enter FE as 0, and I compute PMT. Then this PMT would be the equivalent annuity that is coming from project 1. So $6,500 at 12% mean how much money every year in economic terms. Similarly, the dryer over three years is giving me a present value or a net present value of 5154.88 at the same interest rate of 12 percent and with no future value this would be an equivalent annual payment that will come out by computing the PMT. whichever is higher is the project that should be selected so please verify that for the cleaner, the equivalent annual annuity comes out to be 1578 and for the dryer, it comes out to be 2146. Hence, the dryer is the project that should be taken in case these two are mutually exclusive projects. Theoretically, in capital budgeting, we assumed that given our cost of capital, infinite amount of capital is available. So we calculate the cost of capital saying that if we pay so much interest and we pay so much cost of debt then we can raise as much money as we like however in reality it is often not the case companies have a capital budget or companies have a planned outlay so even with the given cost of capital they don't want to exceed that outlay and they have to ration their capital that is invest it in the most profitable and the most value adding projects so Power Incorporated has $6,000 of capital budget and can invest in five different power projects. The initial investment NPV of the projects are described in the following figure. Determine in which projects should Power Incorporated invest. So the solution to this question is a hidden trial. So see the various combinations possible under $6,000 of total investment outlay and see which of these maximizes the total NPV. So we will find out that if we take on projects G, H and J, we would have invested $6,000 and we would get an NPV of 1440 plus 900 plus 120 equal to $2460 and that is the highest we can achieve given the projects and given the budget. So the next concept deals with sensitivity and scenario analysis. We assume sales of $100,000 and costs of $70,000. In sensitivity analysis, we change each of our assumptions by some percentage points and see what impact it will have on the NPV. So if sales go up by 10%, if costs go down by 10%, if tax rate goes up, so on and so forth. So doing a sensitivity analysis is also an important exercise as it will tell you that which parameters is your NPV most levered to or which is the most critical assumption that you have made because if that assumption goes right or wrong can significantly impact your NPV. In a scenario analysis, we make different scenarios. That is all factors we change together. So we'll increase the sales, reduce the costs, reduce the tax rate and call it a good scenario or a best case scenario. 
will decrease the sales, increase the costs, increase the tax rate and call it a bad scenario or a worst case scenario and try to see the NPV under different scenarios. So sensitivity and scenario analysis are a good addition and a good complement to our NPV analysis. The sensitivity and scenario analysis can be further enhanced with a Monte Carlo simulation. So in a Monte Carlo simulation, we take help of powerful computers and give thousands, even millions of different alternatives and calculate the NPV under each alternative. We can then draw a frequency distribution to depict that in most of the cases, under most assumptions, our NPV was coming out to be $1,000. In some extreme scenarios, NPV was a big positive. In some extreme scenarios, NPV was a big negative. You have to be careful, however, of the assumptions and the inputs that you are giving to your model. Your output will only be as good as the inputs that you provide to a Monte Carlo simulation. We studied the CAPM model at... Um, we studied the CAPM model in portfolio management at level 1 wherein we derived that the expected return from any individual stock is equal to the risk-free rate plus beta of that stock into the market risk premium that is RM minus RF. The same is applicable to projects as well, so that the cost of capital of the project is equal to the risk-free rate plus the beta of the project now into the market risk premium. So calculate the NPV of a three-year project being executed by Milliance that has a beta of two. The initial investment is $1,000 and the project will generate annual cash flows of $400. Assume the risk-free rate is 8% and the expected market return is 14%. So pretty straightforward. We know the cash flows. We can compute the discount rate and we can compute the NPV. Let's first compute the discount rate. So the return required from the project will be calculated as the risk-free rate, that is 8%, plus beta of the project, that is 2, into the return of the market, into the return of the market minus the risk-free rate, which will come out to be 20%. which comes out to be 20%. So the required rate of return on the project is known. The initial investment is $1,000 and three year cash flows of $400. So T equal to zero is a minus 1,000. T equal to one, two and three, there'll be $400 inflows. 20% is a discount rate. So we can compute the NPV of the project by entering N as three. By using the cash flow sheet with CF0 as minus 1000, CO1 as 400, enter FO1 as 3. Please remember to clear work and compute NPV at a rate of interest of 20%, which will come out to be minus $158.5. Now, some projects have real options embedded in the project. A real option could be in the form of a timing option. So timing option allows us to delay a project if we so choose without incurring much cost or without losing much value. So if you see the economy is in a downturn, then if we, if we go with this production method, we will have the ability to delay the project. In some other method, probably, I cannot delay, I'll have to finish it, otherwise it will have be a significant cost. We could have an abandonment option. That is, if in the middle of executing the project, we realize that it is not worth the investment or we are not getting the kind of returns, then we can abandon the project midway without incurring additional costs or without much trouble. This is like a put option, that is we can sell the project at some minimum value even if it doesn't turn out our way. An expansion option is like a call option. So if we see the project is successful, we can easily expand or we can add one more line or one more plant on the same site so as to increase our production. 
flexibility options cover operational aspects so price setting options mean that in this project i will easily be able to increase or reduce the price depending on the demand and depending on different factors a production flexibility options means that from the same plant the production can be increased or decreased very easily by tweaking just small parameters and without any additional cost some projects themselves are options the project itself is a fundamental option for example discovery of oil in kg basin or a gold mining company or an oil exploration company so if the prices of gold go up or the prices of oil go up the whole project also becomes viable and if the project and if the price of gold goes down or the price of oil goes down the project itself is not viable these projects essentially are fundamental options now we can clearly understand that each of these options will have some value it may not give me immediate cash flow or quantifying the cash inflows may be difficult from these options but these options can add value to the project by virtue of the flexibility they provide so let's take an example and try to understand the value of these options so bharat power has estimated that the npv of the expected cash flows from a new production facility to produce base transformers is negative 20 million bharat power's production manager is evaluating an additional investment of 10 million dollars in the equipment bharat power's production manager is evaluating an additional 10 million dollar investment in equipment that would give the management the flexibility to switch between base deluxe and premium models of transformer depending on demand the option to switch production among models of transformers is estimated to have a value of 35 million dollars evaluate the profitability of the project including the real option so without the option the value of the project is minus 20 with the production flexibility option there is an additional value of 35 million dollar that comes in for which an additional amount of 10 million needs to be paid combining this with the original value of minus 20 will now make the npv of our project equal to 5 million dollars so with so without the option this project is not viable but with the option the project should be accepted tornado company a mining company wants to launch a 3 year project for the expansion of a mine in australia with a cost of capital of 14% the initial investment is $1000 and the expected cash flows are $400 from discounted cash flow analysis the npv of the project came to be -158.35 the appropriate decision based on the analysis is not to undertake the project suppose instead that we have more information on the expected cash flows first there is a 50% probability that the cash flows will be $200 and a 50% probability that the cash flows will be $600 that is expected cash flows will be around $400 that's what we have been discounting in addition at the end of the first year we will know whether the project is a success or a failure so if you receive a 600 dollar cash flow it is a success if you receive 200 dollars or less it is a failure and we have the option to abandon the project at the end of the first year itself and receive a salvage value of 500 dollars what should be the optimal abandonment strategy and calculate the npv of the project and the value of the abandonment option using that strategy so there's a 50% chance that the cash flow will be $200 for the next 3 years and a 50% chance 
that the cash flows will be six hundred dollars. Year one, year two, and year three. So the abandonment strategy is relatively straightforward. At the end of year one, if the cash flow is six hundred, accept the project. If the cash flow is 200 or less, do not accept the project or abandon the project. If we accept the project, the probability of which is $600, the probability of which is 50%, then we will receive $600 for the next three years. At a discount rate of 14%, this would mean an NPV that we can calculate. So if you enter N as 3, PMT as 600, I by Y as 14, FV as 0, and compute PV, this will give you the present value of the cash flows 50% of the times. So the present value of the inflows comes out to be 1392.97. The remaining 50% of the times, if we receive $200, we will abandon the project, that is, give up these remaining cash flows and just receive the salvage value of $500. That is, the remaining 50% of the times, the present value of the cash inflows will be 700 upon 1.14, that is, 614.0. The net present value is defined as the present value of the cash inflows. In this case, it will be the expected present value of the cash inflows minus the initial cash outflow or the present value of cash outflows that is equal to $1,000. The present value of the inflows is 50% of the times a value equal to 1392.97. And 50% of the times a value equal to 614.03. So the NPV will come out to be approximately $3.5. So that's the second part of the question. That is the NPV of the project. The last part says calculate the value of the abandonment option using that strategy. So without the abandonment option, the NPV was minus 158.35. With the abandonment option, the NPV is $3.5. So what is the value of the option equal to? 3.5 minus minus 158.35. That is, that is $161.85. So please verify your answers. $3.5 and $161.85. So guys, some mistakes that we are prone to doing in the capital budgeting process that we should be careful about. First, failing to incorporate economic responses. So your competitors won't just sit with their hands tied if you're launching a new project. The pricing that you're thinking may not happen because the competitor may cut prices or the competitor may also expand or he may become more aggressive. Misusing standardized templates and applying them to all questions and all problems. So we need customization and we should not shy away from putting in the effort that needs to be put in for specific problems. Pet projects of the management should be thoroughly analyzed and taken up only if they don't cause significant strain. Just because the CEO feels that real estate is a good investment or oil is a good investment, we should foray into those fields because the management feels so. Decisions should not be based on EPS or ROE, they should be based on cash flows. Use the NPV as your decision making criteria, not the IRR. Poor cash flow estimation is a common problem. Misestimation of overhead costs, so these always tend to be underestimated. IT support costs, other problems, repairs, etc. should adequately be incorporated in the cash flows. Using the incorrect discount rate, and especially for conglomerates, this value will be difficult to estimate. For one project or one sector, there's a lot of comparables, and there's a lot of uh, uh, ways in which you can estimate the project beta. However, for companies that are in four or five businesses, it may be difficult to estimate the cost of capital or the discount rate.
politics involved with spending the entire budget so if profitable opportunities are not there you should return the money back just because you want to spend the entire allocated budget will often lead to misutilization or misallocation of the budget failure to generate alternative investment ideas and improper handling of sunk and opportunity costs is also something that we should be careful about. 